We're here this afternoon with Dr. Jerry Luffman, who's a distinguished professor at the Stevens Institute of Technology here in Hoboken, New Jersey. Dr. Luffman is one of the leading luminaries in the IT offshoring outsourcing industry. We wanted to find out from you today, Jerry, uh, what is, is IT offshoring actually growing or shrinking? Well, most assuredly in the research that uh, I've conducted and others have uh, conducted, it clearly is, is growing and, and growing in, in, in different areas. But on the other hand, one could easily see that the entire IT field is growing, whether it's hiring your own people, uh, onshore outsourcing or offshore outsourcing. So in essence, IT is uh, clearly uh, the place to be for, for anybody uh, looking for a career. Now, what do you make of the IT offshoring piece in particular in terms of the key drivers? What are the key attractions for the CIOs you talk to? Well, the number one driver has always been cost. Uh, the fact that we can get some of the services that we require uh, for less money than if we did it in-house uh, in the United States or if, in fact, we did it uh, outsourced uh, domestically on, on shore. Uh, there's lots of debate. Uh, whether uh, the cost reduction uh, occurs or doesn't occur or how much and to what extent. Uh, but, but clearly the motivation has always been on cost. Uh, today, and, and certainly in the foreseeable future, I believe it's more than just cost. And, and, and I believe the motivation for this continued uh, and expected growth is the fact that, number one, IT is used everywhere. We all know, understand that. And it is clear, if we take a look at the backlog of, of young people entering the field, there aren't enough qualified candidates to fill the demand that's required. And it gets worse when uh, people with gray hair like myself uh, uh, start considering to retire. Uh, that provides a, a larger gap. So the, the good news for younger people are in, in IT are that the, the job opportunities are enormous and there doesn't seem to be uh, an end in sight. The key thing to recognize though is just because you have an IT hat on doesn't mean you're going to have that successful career mm -hmm. because it's, it's not just being an IT person, it's not just having the technical skills, it's having the right technical skills that corporations, whether they're a service provider or a client, uh, what skills they're looking for, but typically uh, service providers and uh, the industry are looking for more than just technical skills. They're looking for the, a good balance of technical skills along with the right business skills, industry skills, interpersonal skills, the you know, communications, the marketing, um, team skills, uh, a, a skill that's uh, been very, very hot in research that we have done is basically uh, ethics and morals for, for people with all of the things going on with uh, people breaking into our government and uh, other, uh, other sites. Um, so so it's, it's having that balance of skills and how well you can differentiate yourself from your competitors. So whether you're a service provider or an individual in the service provider or an individual working for a, a large corporation or any corporation, having the right skills to be able to differentiate yourself is fundamental. Uh, so if you're just going to compete on pure technology, well, I can get that technical skill for a lot less money uh, overseas than I can here. So if that's the case, I'm going to go overseas, which is why we're seeing uh, outsourcing, especially offshore outsourcing, uh, on the rise. Now, in your opinion, uh, traditionally there's been the perception more of an older perception that going offshore is sort of a body shop model. When you need to hire a bunch of bodies, you go offshore. Do you personally believe that there's strategic value gained by working with offshore and nearshore partners? Again, it depends on what your objectives are. If the value uh, proposition is to reduce cost, then you can go to a body shop and a perception of body shop. Uh, I think one of the things that I see a lot of service providers struggling with, whether here in the United States or in India, China, Latin America, or even Eastern Europe, where there are a lot of good opportunities to outsource at lower cost than here in the United States, it is that most of them don't have those other skills that I talked about. So they all have very good technical skills. They can all compete uh, as a commodity from a technical perspective. 
where they have difficulty in competing are those, again, industry skills, mm -hmm. vendor skills, interpersonal skills, communication skills, marketing skills. Well, some of those are soft skills, and that's one of the things people argue in favor of Latin America, because they say that there's more of a familiarity with, uh, with U.S. culture, with U.S. business practices. Have you seen that in all in your, in your research? In, in my travels, especially focusing in on uh, Latin America and considering Latin America, again, technically, they're as good as anybody. Their time zone is the same as the United States, which is a major, major advantage. They've got relationships here in the United States where I, where I haven't seen as effective as it could be are the marketing skills. You know, where they have a lot to offer, their difficulty is how do I sell it? How do I get into the companies that I really need to get into? And it also gets into, uh, they, they tend to be focusing in on those lower level technical skills as opposed to the management consulting kinds of things, the strategic initiative, being able to go into the C-suite and effectively work with the senior business uh, folks to come up with a strategic uh, initiative that would be enabled or driven by information technology. Uh, another related question, Jerry, because I know you talk to CIOs all the time, very involved with the Society for Information Management. Do CIOs already have their hands full concerned with compliance and risk and governance? Do they, are they concerned about further expanding the scope which may involve sending uh, work offshore and, and you know, introducing them to more risk? There, there is always that concern. So the, there's always that con question as to what am I willing or not willing or, or, or can't in some cases, in some cases from the financial services, for example, are they going to send their client data overseas? Can they? Uh, a pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company with very, very extensive research, are they going to send their bread and butter overseas? And, and you know, how do they, they have a tough enough time protecting those assets here in, in their own world, giving it to a, an outsourcer, whether they're domestic or nearshore or offshore uh, for a distant place is, is a major, major risk. I don't think that uh, some of those big players are quite prepared, or should they, to make that move. But, but there are clearly some things that make better sense to uh, outsource uh, than others. Okay. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure.